Look at what's happening here with the expectation that the 10 year may continue to go up. Um, how, how much farther do we have to go down? So, I mean, I think what's interesting is that I think what Needham is saying is that the equity market sell, sell off is about chasing yield, which is we have a battle going on between equities and the bond market because today, dividend yields for equities are 1.51% and the dividend and the bond yield is now 1.55%. By the way, just six months ago, the equity dividend yield was three times higher than the 10 year yield and what were the 10 year bond yield. And so what worries me is there's a lot of passive money out there that's been growing over the last five years as bond yields have continued to decline. And I worry that we don't know what's in those algorithms in terms of asset allocation. So I worry this kind of volatility is gonna to continue to uh, be a curse of the equity markets now going forward as bond yields rise. Okay, but let's just play this out and let, let's play it for long-term investing, not, not, not GameStop today and tomorrow. <laughs> okay. do, you, do you look, do you look at, at, at these d dips, if you will? Is this a buy the dip situation or not? So for big tech, I absolutely think it is. I think these stocks are defensive. If you look at my screen, everything's down more than 2% except big tech because it's hard for big tech to go down 2% because they're trillion dollar companies. So I like them as a defensive play. Obviously, sometimes like Amazon's been dead money for six months because it's a source in for, of money for the reopen trade because Amazon was such a big beneficiary of COVID that people are selling that one to buy reopen trade kind of names. But no, I like them defensively because they're globally scaled. They are monopolies in the businesses they each created and they are um, and they have pricing power. So no, we like them to, and they're liquid. Right. So we really like the big tech for for their for those defensive reasons. Right. I'm sure management doesn't like you calling them monopolies, but investors do. Uh, Laura, let me ask you separately about a call that you've made around Netflix uh, and, and Viacom. Yeah, sure. So what we're saying is that the streaming assets inside of Viacom are worth more than the entire market cap today, which means you're getting the $5 billion of EBITDA from its legacy businesses sort of for free. And we understand that those are shrinking, which is not something Netflix doesn't have an aspect of its business that's shrinking. But over time, we think that the two times revenue multiple that Viacom trades at will close the gap to the eight times multiple that Netflix trades at because really Viacom is a streaming company and I think a more effective uh, streaming company with several competitive advantages over Netflix. And so we think those multiples will converge over the so, next But just time. to be clear, you're saying sell Netflix now and buy Viacom. That, that, that's the play. That's the play. That's what we're arguing. And, and the Netflix multiple comes down to what, ultimately, in your mind? I know you think they're going to converge, but converge where? So um, I think that Viacom will come up to four, which is where the Walt Disney Company currently trades as a streaming, um, as a streaming asset. And so we think Viacom comes up to four or five, and we think Netflix comes down from eight to five. Okay, well, that, hold on. That would put Viacom stock at? Oh, I don't know. I haven't done the numbers. Because it depends on okay. what year you think that happens and what their, their earnings are. How quickly do you think that happens? Five years. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.